Welcome to 2G1 Reviews presents the best comedy you've never seen. Now you know is the best comedy you've never seen. You just need to find someone who will love you the way you want to be loved. Might even be Marty. <laughs> Sorry, Kara. I like my women with bigger tits. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan from 2G1, and welcome back to another best comedy you've never seen. The show that takes a look at some of the best comedies you've never seen. That's a little bit redundant, I Today's episode, we're going to look at the debut directorial effort of Clerk star Jeff Anderson and his wonderful film, Now You Know. The film was actually picked up early by Miramax, but never released, and only saw a video release courtesy of the Weinstein Company after Clerks 2 arrived in theaters. There's a huge amount of talent in this film and some excellent writing, so let's take a look and see what you've missed, starting with some brief history. Jeff Anderson graduated high school with writer-director Kevin Smith, though the two were admittingly not very good friends with each other. Anderson would get to know Smith better when he would go rent VHS tapes from RST Video, which was featured in the film Clerks. Clerks is, of course, Kevin Smith's writing directorial debut. Film nights at the Quick Stop slash RST Video locations where he actually worked. Smith had planned on starring in the film as Clerk Randall Graves and gave this character all the best lines. When Smith realized he would have to pull off all of these great lines, plus direct the film, he decided to give himself the mostly non-speaking role of Silent Bob. Anderson auditioned for Clerks and would land the role of Randall, but never expected the little film to ever be seen in public. He could not be more wrong as the film was purchased by Miramax, was a small hit in theaters, and became a smash on home video. Jeff went to Hollywood, but found that he wasn't much for the audition process. He did land roles in independent films like Love 101 and Rennie's Landing, which is now known as Stealing Time, as well as doing some more work with Smith on Dogma. Try it out. I mean, it's a lot more compact than The Flaming Sword. Jay and Silent Bob strike back. Now drop the kid and pedal your wares someplace else, burn boy. And the very, very short-lived Clerks cartoon. Boss says he's shutting the store permanently. Why? I have no idea. Now You Know starts us off with a bachelor party in Las Vegas, and this is where we meet Jeremy, who was played by Jeremy Sisto. I really like Sisto as an actor, though my experience with him is limited to Now You Know, Clueless, and Suicide Kings, which is one of the best films from the 90s you probably never saw. I killed the hooker. She's fucking dead! Okay, she's not dead. She's just real sore. The only thing that's sore on me is my ear. What's next? Uh, no, no thanks. All of Jeremy's friends are here at his bachelor party having a grand old time. Take a good look at all these dudes, because you're not going to be seeing mostly any of them for the rest of the film. I love being there. My wife is my life. Secret to marriage is you get out of it what you put into it, exactly what you put into it. Yes. Uh, that'd be me. Excuse me, gentlemen. Jeremy isn't very happy because he's holding on to a secret. A secret that only his good friend Shane knows. That Jeremy is no longer getting married. You relax, man. I can't relax. I'm going to tell them. No, you're going to ruin everyone's time. I'm not going to tell them where to fear. Let it go. The film very suddenly does a complete 180, moving from the bachelor party in Vegas to a quiet street in New Jersey, where we are introduced to Gil and Biscuit, played by Jeff Anderson and Trevor Furman. What does one have to do with the other? At this point, not much. The film doesn't give you any explanation either, and the only reason to have this scene placed right here is to show that this takes place at the exact time that the bachelor party does, to introduce these two leads and some of the fun that they like to have. For instance, they aren't breaking into this house to steal anything. Rather, they are breaking into this house to just move things around. Take a painting off the wall and totally replace it with two different paintings. Why? Because it's fun. <laughs> now that, my friend, is what it's all about. Good go with the pictures. I like that one. It's subtle, you know? <laughs> Who knows what he's going to notice that? Before we move on, Gil and Biscuit tie one plot to the other. Oh, man, we got to bring Jeremy with us sometime, dude. Jeremy's coming home to get married. I don't think we'll have a whole lot of time to go breaking into people's houses with us. Maybe we could bring a stripper and call it a bachelor party. <sighs> Breaking into somebody's house and throwing the bachelor party. That's like no cleanup. That is actually a brilliant idea. 
I may have to get on that. All right, so the next day, Jeremy is flying back to New Jersey for his non-wedding. And getting right on the plane with him is his former fiance Carrie, played by Rashida Jones. Anyone who doesn't marry Rashida Jones should have their head and their balls examined, I'm just saying. Your friend is removing a ball and chain from your ankle for me to see? I got the message. It was very cute. That was for my bachelor party last night. Jeremy, we're not getting married. We learn that Carrie is the one who called off the wedding and that Jeremy really has no clue why or what the hell is going on with their relationship. As soon as everyone gets on, I'm going to find an empty seat and move. Carrie, I don't want you to move. I want to talk to you. You don't want to talk the night that we called the wedding off? Here, there's a magazine. Because it's too late for talking. Wow, this flight's going to be fun. Let's pan over to Mr. Victim. That's actually what he's listed as in the credits, and he's played by Stuart Pankin, who you should know from not necessarily the news, but since that aired like 90 years ago, you may know him from Curb Your Enthusiasm. HBO, can we seriously bring back not necessarily the news because that show was awesome. There was a major revolt in the African nation of Zaire. For that story, let's go live to correspondent Steve Casper. Here, Bob, what do you know? <laughs> Steve. What the hell are you doing here? You're supposed to be in Zaire. Zaire? I thought you said stay here. <laughs> now, Mr. Victim is obviously very confused, meaning that Gil and Biscuit accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. Mr. V checks his wallet and nothing is missing. He's puzzled, and don't worry, he'll be more puzzled as time goes on. Having landed in New Jersey, Carrie is now waiting for her best friend Marty to pick her up, played by Heather Page Kent, who is not my girlfriend in this movie, or in real life, which really stinks. All right, well, the two embrace, and then Marty goes to embrace Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. How you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. We go to the nuts, scumbag. Marty, you Not the best kick to the nuts ever. That's actually a pretty awful take right there. Reminds me of The Godfather. Ah, Sonny. The phantom punch heard round the world. Would you like to take a ride? Do you need a tutor? My name's Biscuit. Show me your buns. <laughs> Gil and Biscuit are on the job, starting their work day and catcalling a bunch of 13-year-old Catholic schoolgirls. That's really a great idea since you are in the state where Megan's Law originated, guys. Come on. Now, Gil and Biscuit are at the Sun Goddess's house. Gil is in the front, and fortunately for Biscuit, he gets to cut the lawn in the back, where the Sun Goddess is lying out. The Sun Goddess is played by home improvement hottie Debbie Dunning, who really fills out a bikini quite nicely. She puts her little chihuahua on a leash, sits down in her chair, and proceeds to flirt with Biscuit. Biscuit doesn't really have the skills to even flirt back. I mean, forget about trying to seal any deal with this goddess. So, he just tries his best until, well, until this happens. We work in a dangerous environment where accidents are bound to happen, but we can't afford to lose any more customers. Not to mention what that does to the blades. She didn't call the police until you got there, Gil. Hey, I was just doing some damage control. Maybe if we just pretended nothing happened, we could have come back next week and she would have forgotten all about it. The dog's tongue actually hit her. So they killed the dog and lost a client, probably the best looking client anyone could ever have. And I would kill to uh, mow her grass if she was wearing a bikini like that. But um, let's move forward with the plot. Jeremy comes back home and his mother is waiting with open arms. His mom looks like Mary Kay Place. But is it Mary Kate Place? So I'm not going to call her Mary Kate Place. Jeremy looks around his room, and I'm not sure if it's nostalgia for a room he hasn't seen in a while, or if he's just depressed that he is back home with a called off wedding. Gil calls and slightly touches on what I'm talking about with a throwaway line while inviting Jeremy out to drink at a local bar. Hello. Hey, shit's day. Hey, Gil, what's up, man? How's it going? I'm good, how you doing? I'm all right. How's it in the city? Vegas is hot. It was 100 degrees when I left. That was 8.30 this morning. Hey, you want to come down to Bootlegger? Yeah, it sounds good. It's biscuit with you. That's the only Cool. So let's go to the bar Bootlegger, where the characters are all going to meet. But first, let's listen to some of the wisdom of Biscuit. I'm just saying, guys and girls are just two different animals. Cats and dogs, if you will. Guys are like the dogs. Not too bright, and they hump anyone's leg two seconds after they meet them. Guys all know what other guys want. Sex. That's it. 
No romance, no long strolls on the beach, just straight up nasty sex. You guys follow this? I bet Gilly had 20 bucks that you'd come out of the closet before the end of the year. Out of the closet? I'm not gay. Yeah. I'm just saying that the homosexual lifestyle, in theory, is ideal. And thank you. Thank you very much. So, I started this review for now, you know, probably four or five months ago, and it has literally taken forever. 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 It has never taken me this long ever to complete a best comedy you've never seen. I considered myself very stuck on this project, uh, to the point where I almost abandoned it and just had it be a lost episode, lost forever. I really couldn't articulate what I wanted to say and get it out. Say it! Say it! Ultimately, I decided to just press forward and not abandon the project, um, but I figured that I had to kind of move along rather quickly. And here's why. Most of the humor in this film comes from the characters' dialogue, as with most films. But the thing is, most of the characters, usually for the most part, sit around and talk to each other. While the characters move from place to place, most of the time they're just sitting around and talking. The rest of the plot of Now You Know is very simple. Jeremy tries to figure out where his life should go, having no clue why his fiance dumped him. Carrie tries to figure out what next to do with her life and struggle with her decision to leave Jeremy while trying to find out if her reasoning and logic for leaving him was sound. The characters confront these questions, normally with the help of both friends and strangers around them. So I'll go back to the bar for a second when Jeremy joins Gil and Biscuit and they discuss Jeremy's relationship. Jeremy also thinks it's a wise move to try and talk up a stranger at the bar, played by Paget Brewster. And how does a man just walk away from the woman he loves and just shrug it off. I'm not shrugging it off. There's just a lot more to it that I don't care to get into right now. I just, I don't understand. I mean, you say that you love this woman, but then when things get a little strained, you just walk away? I mean, what the fuck is that? It doesn't work out so good for Jeremy. And Jeremy is stuck, once again, trying to figure out where did he go wrong in his life. Now, Carrie and Marty talk to each other. They end up going to a lesbian bar where they sit down with a group of new lesbian friends and talk to each other. And then they go back to the house where they talk to each other. This is most of Carrie and Marty's character arcs, sitting around and talking. This kind of interaction is very common throughout the rest of this film. If you think that most of the comedy doesn't come from them, you would be correct. However, there are a few great scenes, especially this one, where Marty fucks with Carrie's kid brother, who always seems to just hang around because he has a crush on Marty because she's Heather Page Kent. Carrie and I were just giving each other breast exams, and she thought she felt something on one of my boobs. Do you think you can feel it for me? So what do you think? You think it's okay? Cliff? Cliffy? There's a great part toward the end of the film where Biscuit Stripper is about to arrive for Jeremy's bachelor party. The four guys, as Shane has come to Jersey to join the crew, have this little conversation. Believe it or not, Biscuit handled this one on his own. <laughs> I had to go to the dentist, but I called the place beforehand. This was foolproof. They said they had giant color catalogs. All he had to do was flip through and pick a beautiful girl. Even he can't screw this one up. Biscuit, tell him you couldn't have screwed this up, right? How did you pick one? I mean, what was your criteria? I just tried to find the hottest girl, but they were all hot. So then I asked the guy, like, who he would recommend. And he said they were all good, but he said, like, the ones in the back were a little bit more risque. Risque? Well, you, can, you know, like, risque. Like, you know, they're, like, they're a little dirtier, a little nastier. They do, like, fucking, like, tricks with bottles and stuff. Oh, for Christ's sake, oh. Biscuit. Of course, this being Biscuit, he even screws this up, and comedy ensues. Hi, guys. So who's our bachelor? A lot of the comedy here does come from Gil and Biscuit's constant torturing of Mr. Victim, which happened several more times throughout the movie. What the hell? That's exactly what I said. You brought me here at 9.30 in the morning to show me how you redecorated? No, no, I didn't do... Why would I... I, I woke up this morning and it was exactly this way. The man thinks he's going insane to the point where his insanity almost ends up killing the foursome in the end. At 
Sometimes these scenes feel like they are from another screenplay, but most of the time it adds some much needed levity to the film, and these scenes are usually placed at the perfect time for such levity. This ends up leading to the end of the film, which is also not what you'd expect. If you think that they end up getting back together and getting married, you are also guessing wrong. It's what I love about this movie. You can't really guess what is going to happen. You just have to sit back, enjoy the ride, while letting the movie, and not your mind, do the storytelling. Beyond that, I find Now You Know to be a cute, funny, romantic comedy that has a nice amount of soul, humor, and quality acting. The screenplay by a first-time screenwriter is pretty solid, as is the direction. On top of that, Jeff Anderson cast himself in his own movie, and therefore, we got to see a major acting talent back on screen once again. I wish this happened more since Now You Know, but that isn't the case. Anderson did follow up Now You Know with Kevin Smith's Clerks 2, reprising his role of Randall Graves. The terrorists. I left the coffee pot on again, didn't I? Smith would also cast Trevor Furman in the major role of Elias, another co-worker of Randall and Dante's at a fast food restaurant called Mubi's. Maybe you're all about the cock. No, no, I like the pussy. So come on, did Myra ever give you a crack at her crack or what? The film was a major success, grossing $25 million on a $5 million budget. It's damn funny, and the perfect follow-up to a film that I thought could never, ever have a sequel. Anderson would continue doing some voice work, voicing the main character in a point-and-click adventure game called Randall's Monday. There's something spooky going on in town. What do you mean, kid? Don't scare me. Well, you see... Maybe you'll think this is kind of silly. And also a bounty hunter in the Star Wars The Clone Wars animated cartoon. <sighs> we better get going. That patrol may come back. Come on, pretties. One more step. Kevin Smith announced a few years back that Clerks 3 would be his next film, and was just a few weeks away from beginning production of that film when Anderson pulled out. On the downside, we may now never have a completed Clerks trilogy, and Anderson pulling out of the movie could possibly mean that about a hundred people or so didn't have a job. But then again, maybe the screenplay sucked and Anderson didn't want to tarnish his best-known character no matter the paycheck. I haven't been the biggest fan of Kevin's recent film, so if that was truly the case, I guess I'd side with Jeff. Once again, I apologize for the truncated review of Now You Know, but hopefully you enjoy what you saw. And if you liked any of this, from the screenplay to the cast, I highly recommend you running out and finding Now You Know right away. You'll laugh, and you might cry, but for the most part, you'll sit there and think how talented Jeff Anderson really is. Now You Know stars Jeremy Sisto, Rashida Jones, Heather Page Kent, Jeff Anderson, Trevor Furman, Paget Brewster, Todd Babcock, Stuart Pankin, Kevin Smith, Debbie Dunning, Edie McClurg, Jennifer Schwalbach, and Liz Sheridan and Earl Bowen as Grandma and Grandpa. Thanks for watching. It really helps if you like, subscribe, and comment below, especially if you liked what you saw today. We will be back with another best comedy you've never seen, but until then, this is Ryan from 2G1, and I'll catch you next movie. Floating like a ghost, got a keen eyes on you. You'll sneak up behind me, touch me and I'm through. Unless I'm feeling big, just get a little bit, be little. It's hard to resist the physical thrill of jumping on top of you for the kill. So okay, well, thanks anyway. Night.